And a new feud is bubbling up between Governor Reynolds and former President Trump. This comes after the New York Times reported that even though she's officially neutral, so not endorsing anyone in the 2024 race, Reynolds quietly favors Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Well, Trump doesn't like this. And he's lashing out on his Truth Social account, writing in part, quote, I endorsed her, did big rallies, and she won. Now she wants to remain neutral. I don't invite her to events. DeSantis down 45 points. Joining us now, former RNC chairman and MSNBC political analyst Michael Steele and former New York Democratic Congressman Max Rose. Congressman, since you are here with me in person, I'll start with you. What do you make of Trump picking a fight with Iowa's governor? <laughs> you know, politics is like high school on steroids, and that certainly is the case right now. There's some interesting dynamics at play here. One, Donald Trump perennially breaks this rule of never punch down in politics. He truly does not care. And for some reason, in these particular cases, it's working. It's clear that the governor of Iowa favors Ron DeSantis. Otherwise, she wouldn't be doing so many events with him. But on the same hand, she refuses to endorse DeSantis, despite clearly favoring him, because of this fear of the Trumpian base. And then finally, what we see yet again is Donald Trump dominating the narrative in this primary, constantly making this the WWF of American politics, picking a fight each and every day, making it nearly impossible for anyone else in the primary to capture the limelight. You know, it, what we're seeing as the weeks and days go on here, it is becoming ever more likely that Trump will get mm -hmm. the nomination because no one else can gain the momentum here. He is sucking up a lot of oxygen, that's for sure. But, Michael, other candidates are rushing to the, the governor's defense here. Do you think that's more about her or more about Trump? Probably both. Um, they see an advantage to sort of rally around her a little bit, uh, to sort of poke at Trump. Uh, the reality of it is Trump uh, is, you know, doing the one thing that, you know, in politics, those of us who are in politics and the congressman knows this, you know, this idea that, you know, you're going to get the, you know, the person you endorse is going to wrap around and endorse you. And that's always a 50-50 crapshoot. <laughs> you know, depends on the circumstances. You know, that's the nature of politics. But Trump, Trump has redefined the sport in such a way uh, that things like this to him, he takes very personally. So the governor's going to have her hands full. She's going to have. She's going to be forced at some point to come out and say something because Trump's going to continually remind Iowans that she is in that chair because he put her there, because they put her there. And keeping with this theme that you know what they do to me, they really want to do to you. Uh, this is another way in which Trump will leverage the conversation against the governor uh, should she continue to flirt with DeSantis the way she has so far. Uh, and I don't think the governor's prepared to deal with that. And that's why she thinks right now the better political play is to remain neutral. But in Trump's world, neutrality yeah. is an offense. Right. He's, uh, he's of the mentality, if you're not with right. me, you're against me or that's something right. like that. Uh, I do want to ask you, Michael, about Senator Tim Scott, who is banking on some traction in these early states, including Iowa, to try to get momentum going in his campaign. Listen to how he responds to some criticism he's been facing when it comes to issues of race. There are a lot of people on the left who say that this idea of up from the bootstraps, which you promote, that everybody could do it if they work hard enough, really is ignoring the basic racial history of this country. What do you say to those criticisms? Uh, just one word. Hogwash. <laughs> it's the simplest word I can use. It's just hogwash. The truth of my life disproves the lies of the radical left. What they hate the most is a candidate like me who actually disrupts their narrative. Michael, your reaction or your response to those I, comments? I, I appreciate Tim. I've known Tim. I got him, you know, helped get him elected in 2010 to Congress. Uh, I was part of our team then. Um, but the reality of it is, it's not hogwash, <laughs> whatever that is. It's not that. Uh, the reality of it is, you cannot say in the one hand that the story of your life is about, you know, uh, something other than race, and then talk about and tell us stories about how you've been racially profiled or how, you know, you've run and met people who have had to deal with racism. How do you explain their stories? Because that's part of their life, too. So Tim has got to figure out a way in which he can authentically speak about 
both things at the same time because you can. Um, most black people can. They can express to you a hope in the country that enslaved their great great grandparents, right? So you you can have that you can have that conversation. You don't have to play to that white male vote uh, to try to you know prove oh the country is not racist when in fact that is not the experience of a lot of people of color even to this day. And I'm sure he'll be asked about race at the first debate, which is next month. And one of the requirements to make the debate stage is you have to have at least 40,000 donors. Now, a couple of candidates are getting rather creative here. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum is actually offering a $20 gift card to people who donate just $1 to his campaign. Innovative, Congressman. It's not bad. It's how I took my kid to Coney Island over the weekend. So a here's, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what a hustle. You know, it, it, it should be illegal what's going on here, or at least barred by both of the committees. You know, there's this 40,000 donor target that they each have to reach to get to the debate stage, because what they're avoiding is to see 25 candidates out there, and it, it, won't, it, it won't make any sense in the end. So, you know, some of this might work, but in the end, for the the numbers don't play out. They don't have that much money to start. Now, what's interesting about this donor count is we have seen some members of the Republican primary actually perform pretty tremendously. Vivek uh, Ramaswamy being a great example of that has gotten 50, 60,000 uh, donations already. So we are seeing politics, particularly presidential politics, become a bit more meritocratic as technology plays in more and more. Uh, you saw this with the Pete Buttigieg campaign mm -hmm. several years ago. So we'll see how this plays out. But hustles like this, that's not going to work. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe it will. Who knows? All right. Michael Steele, <laughs> former Congressman Max Rose, appreciate you both. Thanks so much for being here.